you know, there's a quote from the Buddha that I really like that says, greater in battle than the man who would conquer a thousand men is he who would conquer just one himself. Mm. Better to conquer yourself than others. Mm -hmm. And again, awareness of self, understanding who you are, mm -hmm. understanding what makes your heart sing, mm -hmm. understanding what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. understanding your thoughts and where they're coming from, right? If you don't understand your own thoughts, you're not going to be able to really manage your intentions or your actions well. Hey, I'm Nathan Crane. I'm Derek Crane. And we're the co-founders of Crane Factor and the hosts for the Activating Greatness podcast. Activating Greatness is about living with greatness every single day, understanding yourself and being true to who you are, and creating greatness in every area of your life. And in today's episode, we're talking about the five million qualities of greatness. We are going to be here for 10,000 hours. And it's, they say that it takes 10,000 hours to become a master at anything. That's right. So if you got the next 10,000 hours, hang around with us. All right, just kidding. But we are going to talk about five qualities of greatness. Now, these are five qualities we believe that equate to greatness. Now, obviously, you could have hundreds or thousands of qualities, right? And what we did is we mm -hmm. took main categories of human qualities, of characteristics, of practices, habits that we consider make you a great, an amazing, a fulfilled human being. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about some of the subcategories within those as well and how to make it practical in your life and some of the things we've learned about these qualities along the way. So uh, just to give you a quick overview, the first quality of greatness is awareness of self. The second is physical health. The third is leadership. The fourth is integrity. And the fifth is what we would say is love. Now, as you can see, these are big categories, but in this podcast, we try to keep it 25 minutes or less, so we're going to dive right in and talk about the first one, which is awareness of self. Mm -hmm. And I love to think about awareness of self as a simple and yet profound formula. It's intention plus action equals result. So bringing awareness into the intentions behind everything that we're doing you know seeing seeing one's thoughts even even knowing where your thoughts are heading towards so that you're actually bringing awareness into what i like to think of as that astral realm that's where that's where that the tools and the work begins so that then when you go into the action you have a very clear concise idea of the action itself and one, one question that i like to ask myself is are my intentions positive or negative negative? and then also my actions are my actions positive or negative and then when we're actually acting out through the intention that's where we bring it into the physical and bringing consciousness and awareness into that and then being able to see the result so it's kind of like that rinse and repeat if if the result is positive and it's something that we're enjoying and we can see that result and it brings joy to our life and bringing even that consciousness into seeing it and then if it's not, then we can go back to that intention, go back to the action, and then see the result again. Right. You know, it's that famous saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> and I didn't understand what that meant until, um, you know, I had this huge project uh, that I'd been working on for a couple of years. And mm -hmm. it was a massive risk and a massive investment, a lot of mm -hmm. money, time, energy, people involved negotiations, contracts, all kinds of things, and had really good intentions, mm. had some good experience behind it, but certainly not enough experience. Mm. And even with all the really good intentions, the, the pure thinking, the dreaming of it, the praying of it, the, all the good things I put into it, the actions were not in alignment mm. with what the result, uh, what I wanted the result to be. Mm. And so, and it wasn't, necessarily like, it, you know, I wasn't intending to take bad actions and I wasn't doing things in a bad way, just in a way that weren't aligned with that result, mm. right? And so I learned from that experience and improved that 90% the next time around. And if I were ever to do that kind of project again, I now could improve it even another 90% mm. around, which again, 
the intentions were still aligned. It's just the actions are what need to get better. So as you said, yes, you have to have aligned intentions and be very clear, mm -hmm. right? Through your thinking, through your intentions, through your emotions, but your actions also have to be very aligned as well, right? And talking about the result too, right? Like at the time, that result to me seemed like really bad result, very negative result. Uh, I was even depressed for like two weeks following it. But at the same time, I look at those experiences as learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. So even if something turns out like, oh man, that was bad or that sucked or whatever, in the end, it actually turned out to be really good for me because it set me on a new path in my life, put me in a new direction now that actually I wouldn't have been in had I not gone through that you know, very challenging experience. And oftentimes greatness is born through adversity, mm. right? And so it was that adverse experience, that challenging experience that allowed me to be able to do better things actually since then and work towards uh, bigger, let's say greater things in, in other ways. So, you know, don't avoid bad results mm -hmm. and don't think, you know, you're doing everything wrong because sometimes it's just not the right timing or whatever and they're always learning opportunities. You know, there's a quote from the Buddha that I really like that says greater in battle than the man who would conquer a thousand men is he who would conquer just one himself mm. better to conquer yourself than others mm -hmm. and again awareness of self understanding who you are mm -hmm. understanding what makes your heart sing mm -hmm. understanding what you're passionate about mm -hmm. understanding your thoughts and where they're coming from Right? If you don't understand your own thoughts, you're not going to be able to really manage your intentions or your actions well. Mm. Right? Understanding your traumas, mm. being okay with them, understanding them, accepting them, learning how to heal them. Mm. Right? If you're having adverse reactions to something somebody's saying to you, then that's typically coming from a place deep rooted within you. Mm. Right? Someone says something and it sets you off. Oh, you made me so mad. Mm. Ah, it's all your fault. Mm. I'm so pissed off, it's your fault. Mm. And it's like, no, yeah. that person is triggering something inside of you. Mm. You're triggering something inside of me that's in me. I wouldn't get pissed off at you unless that thing was already in me mm. that you triggered, right? So to understand oneself means to know all of that terrain, mm. all the terrain on the inside and the outside, right? And there's a Carl Jung quote that I really like, or he said, everything that irritates us about others can lead us to understanding of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you look at someone and you're talking gossip about them or you're saying how bad they are at something or whatever. That's really just a mere reflection of yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm speaking from this because I've seen this in myself, you know. Yeah. Um, I've seen this in myself time and time again. And every time I see that, it's a reminder that's like, okay, that's something in myself. Not that it needs to be fixed. Maybe it just needs to be healed or transformed. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a trauma or something that's deep rooted from when I was a kid or whatever that just needs to be, you know, cared with love and, and allowed to let go and transform into something better. Mm. That's so beautiful and potent. The underlining theme that I'm getting through everything that you're speaking about is the mindset into it. And, and another thing that you said, it's almost like, the outside world, the perspective in which we see is a mirror. It's a mirror about our own self-talk, our own mindset. Right. So that mindset where you said, you know, in others, it could have been devastating failure and they could have gone through that for the rest of their lives. But well, I like the, the mindset of having a growth mindset. So you're bringing awareness right. to the result and then you decided to make a positive out of what could have been a negative. So bringing, bringing awareness into every single area of life from the astral to the physical and then being able to even take a step back and look at the result right and so the greatest tool that i've ever learned and have practiced for over a decade now to continue to learn and understand myself have that awareness of self is meditation yeah. and every form of meditation possible and i've tried many and um and they all work and they all have value and benefit and it's just a matter of bringing meditation into your daily mm. life right and we could do a whole podcast or 200 podcasts on meditation mm -hmm. but just the the key takeaway here is to start incorporating meditation into your daily life 10 minutes 20 minutes half hour an hour 
as much as you can, but starting with something. If someone were to start it fresh, never done it before, what would you say where to begin? Like what? Yeah, so the starting point for me with meditation, um, and it's, it's really the same thing you do even if you're an advanced meditator, is mm -hmm. sit in a quiet place or lay down, right? Mm -hmm. Typically eyes closed without too many distractions to begin with. Mm -hmm. The better you get, you can do it in a place where there's more distractions actually, and that's, that becomes the purpose of meditation, mm -hmm. is you can calm yourself while you're in a really you know, chaotic mm -hmm. environment. But sitting quietly, closing your eyes, taking really big deep breaths and focusing on the breath coming in and the breath going out, really focusing on your breath. And as thoughts come up, you're not trying to eliminate thoughts. You're observing your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so you step back as if you're a, a spectator watching the thoughts go through your head. And just this act of observance alone starts to help you separate from identifying with those thoughts mm -hmm. and allows you to activate more self-awareness and self-control. Because the more you can step outside of your thinking and watch your thoughts go by and not be attached to them and not think that your thoughts are controlling who you are, you don't identify with those thoughts anymore, then the more you can start changing your thoughts, mm. right? And you can't change your thoughts if you're not aware of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And the only way to become aware of your thoughts is to sit quietly and observe them as they pop up. You're going to have, this is stupid. Why am I sitting here? This is dumb. This is, I'm just breathing. This is doing nothing for me, right? But if you can step outside and watch that thought and just bless it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I see that thought. That's okay. Let it go. Another thought comes up, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I don't want to do this. So, okay, observe that thought, let it go. Mm -hmm. Another thought, observe it, let it go. That's really the starting point. Mm -hmm. And the more you do that and the better you become at it, actually what happens is you'll notice a lot of those negative thoughts just stop coming into your mind. Mm -hmm. It's really incredible, right? But it takes time and practice, just like going to the gym and working out, building muscle strength, coordination, skill. You don't do that overnight. You do it through daily practice, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I can have a negative thought come in and in a second it's gone and it's not with me anymore. Mm -hmm. Most people have a negative thought come in and that could be with them for hours or days or weeks, mm -hmm. right? And then they're living in that negativity that is scientifically destroying their body, causing cancer, causing disease, mm -hmm. all kinds of problems. And that's why meditation is so valuable. Helps you understand yourself, but it also helps you heal yourself mm -hmm. and helps you live a, a happier, more fulfilling life. Mm -hmm. And so that leads us into second quality of greatness, which is what we would just simply call physical health, yeah. right? Your inner health, your, in this case, the inner health, yes, of your mind, even though it's not physical, but really the inner health of your organs, of the mm -hmm. inside of your body. Mm -hmm your tissues, joints, things like that, as well as your outer physical health, mm -hmm. your ability to move, right? The, your, your physical experience in the external world, mm -hmm. your ability to do things, to lift things, to have functional movement in your life. Mm -hmm. And so without balanced physical health, what happens? You live in pain, mm -hmm. you live with less opportunity, mm -hmm. right? You live a much more challenged life. And, you know, in physical health, I mean, you can see people who are even in a wheelchair, who have no legs and arms, that figure out ways to be healthy inside and outside, mm -hmm. figure out ways to move better than a lot of people who have legs and arms, mm -hmm. you know, which is incredible, right? So that should inspire us, if even a little bit, to yeah. take better health, better care of our bodies so that you know we can activate more greatness within us yeah i really like how you said having the balance between the inside of the body and the outside of the body so going outside getting sunshine being barefoot upon the grass connecting doing meditation also doing some form of movement it doesn't have to you know you don't have to go and search for the olympics if that's part of your goals then drive for it but it could be as simple as even going for a walk out in nature, creating right. peace, stillness, so that you're also in the physical, creating health within the physical, and then also having emotional intelligence behind it. So it becomes both the astral with the physical, the concept of bringing that awareness into it as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know growing up, like, I was living on McDonald's, yeah. uh, got heavy into drug addiction, drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, mm. um, eating garbage food. And by the time I was 18, like, my body was destroyed, mm. you know. Also from hardcore sports, you know, skateboarding, snowboarding, uh, BMXing, you know, football, all kinds mm. of things. So the outside was getting destroyed as well as the inside mm. wasn't taken care of either just didn't have the education. And through that experience, it led me down this path of really, you know, I spent over 10 years and continue now, um, well, 12 years now, just really researching, studying, and experimenting the inner health, mm -hmm. nutrition, diet, herbs, um, along with, you know, meditation and managing emotions and these sorts of things. And then uh, that kind of led me to, well, I've been forgetting about the exterior of my body, my mobility, my ability to move without pain, my ability to lift things, to run, to cycle, all these things that as you age, if you stop moving, stop being flexible, stop having that range of motion, mm -hmm. then to do any of that is very painful. Mm -hmm. You see people, I mean, you see people in their 30s, right? Uh, for me, for example, that starts doing CrossFit or trying to do gymnastics or something that getting injured easily and not having the flexibility and having lots of shoulder issues and back issues and all that. Why? Sitting in a chair mm -hmm. 10 hours a day without moving, stretching. So adding in yoga, adding in some kind of movement, adding in CrossFit, adding mm -hmm. whatever you can, like you're boxing now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anything just to stay active mm -hmm. every single day because activity, exercise, movement, mobility, stretching, all these things are actually proven to prolong your life and give you a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. So yes, more the simple answer to internal health is more plants, mm -hmm. more organic, mm -hmm. less animal products, mm -hmm. and less uh, things in boxed, uh, canned, uh, processed, manufactured uh, ingredients mm -hmm. that are filled with toxins and pollutants and things that cause diseases, right? Mm -hmm. So more simple, more basic, straight from the earth, whole foods mm -hmm. internally, again, more plants, more organic, and then externally, any kind of movement that helps you stay active, mm -hmm. right? Cardio, um, boxing, anything that's fun, mm -hmm. cycling, running, swimming, anything, and start regaining your range of motion back and start regaining your life back. Yeah. and. As a personal trainer, uh, I've seen I've seen people who come in with injuries, and then at that point they're like, "Now, now I need to work on this," you know. And it's even different in the sense of going through like a major surgery, getting the L4, L5 fused together, the lower part of the vertebrae. Um, and but what we can do is, because as having my specialist in corrective exercises, I know that physical therapy based exercise after injury can also be preventive from getting injury in the first place. Right. So don't wait until you have a disease, cancer, some, some sort of debilitating illness to suddenly take action because there's some very simple and profound actions that you can take now, like just what you said, more organic, plant-based, less pesticides and herbicides in the system pH balance out the system, also doing all this mobility and stuff to prevent physical injury so that you can stay active and healthy and happy. Exactly. And so that leads us to our third quality of greatness, which is leadership. Mm -hmm. And leadership being simply recognizing the areas that you are already a leader in mm -hmm. and then identifying areas of your life that you could be a better leader in, mm -hmm. right? Because... I believe that we're all leaders mm -hmm. in one way or another. If you're a father, you're a leader to your children. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a mother, you're a leader to, to your children. If you're a grandparent, you're a leader to your grandchildren and your, and your children. If you're in a community mm -hmm. of anything at all, you could be considered a leader in that community, whether it's at your gym, your school, um, people know you uh, at the library or wherever. If, if you talk to people and people come to you asking for advice or want to talk to you about anything, in some way or another, you are a leader, mm -hmm. right? And so the key here, as we've talked about, always to be a better leader is simply lead by example, mm -hmm. right? So if you say something, if you give advice, 
if you want to guide somebody in any kind of direction at all, then the key there is whatever you're saying, then do your best mm. to live that way, mm. you know? Um, and yeah, we're going to have mistakes and it's going to be challenging and we're going to have setbacks and all those things come up, but it's about correcting, mm. course correcting yourself when those things happen and remind yourself, oh, I'm trying to be a leader in this area. I want to be a better leader in this area. Because to be great at anything, you have to be a leader. And it doesn't mean you have to lead hundreds or thousands or millions of people, mm -hmm. but you have to recognize that you are a leader in one form or another, mm -hmm. and then find ways to improve your leadership. It's always inspiring and motivating to me personally when I see someone walking the talk, like coaches. Yeah. Coaches actually going out and competing or they're they're living that healthy lifestyle and then they're handing that knowledge down to someone else or even in the term of meditation, you know, learning from someone who's reached a level to a point of, you know, enlightenment or it doesn't even necessarily need to be there, but they're living that lifestyle every single day or, you know, a, a lot of yogis will go through um, guru yoga instructors to get the downloads in that sense from people who have um, mastered those talents. So one thing to do within leadership, you want to become a better leader, seek out leaders that inspire and motivate you and then see their characteristics, how they how they walk the talk. What are they what are they doing? Do they have like a morning routine? I'm sure I'm sure that they're doing a whole bunch of positive stuff in their life um, besides just the moment that they're leading uh, people around them. Exactly. I mean, I've um, been fortunate and blessed to have, you know, spoken on stages in front of mm -hmm. thousands of people around the country and even in some other countries now and in like 30 states or around the U.S. And, mm -hmm. you know, have at a very young age have found myself in a leadership role and having to uh, really focus on improving that continuously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking of like, how can I be a better leader? How can I you know, be uh, a better example. How can I, you know, and those things lead you to, oh, I need to be more disciplined. I need to continue learning. I need to realize that I don't know everything and mm -hmm. that I still have so much to learn and take a step back sometimes and recognize, you know, the good qualities inside yourself and the qualities that need improvement. And mm -hmm. one of those big qualities that, you know, we consider a quality of greatness as well, which is our fourth one, is integrity. Mm -hmm. And I like Don Miguel Ruiz's version of this and the four agreements, the book, the four agreements. And the first agreement is be impeccable with your word. Mm -hmm. And that agreement says, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Say only what you mean. Mm -hmm. Avoid using the word. So your language, any words, avoid using the word to speak against yourself man, I suck, I'm bad at this, or whatever, or to gossip about others. Yeah, he's so stupid, she's so dumb, whatever, right? Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth mm. and love. And some people get uh, confused about what truth is mm. and what gossip is or negative talk. Because I've said, look, why are you saying that about this person? Well, that's the truth. I said, yeah, but listen to the way you're mm -hmm. saying about it. Maybe they are doing those things, mm -hmm. but do you really need to say it in such a negative way about them? Is that helping you in any way? Is that helping them in any way? Is that helping the world in any way? No, it's not. It's actually hurting you more than anybody because you're the one that's feeling that negative emotion, saying that negative thing about that person. So there is the truth. Like, yeah, that person, you know, came over and broke my window and stole this from my car or whatever, right? That's the truth. Or you can say, yeah, that stupid mother effer came over and he's such an idiot and a piece of crap and blah, blah, stole my blood, right? That's an example of taking the truth to the extreme, right? So I love this about being impeccable with your words. Speak with integrity. Mm. Be very mindful of what you're saying mm. and how you're saying it to yourself and to others. Yeah, that's a very good point. And when I think of integrity, I also think about being honest with oneself, like being true to oneself. Like when you're doing something yeah. hard, are you doing it because you full heartedly believe in it and that you love it? 
or is it just kind of autopilot mode? So you can even take a step back and look at those qualities. And if you're living passionately and you're in your own truth and you're in connection with your own thoughts and you're loving what you do, you're having integrity with your own self. You know, right. and, and people around you may not even agree with your own dreams, desires, goals, what you want to achieve. They may not even support you. But if you love it and you have a deep desire for, to achieve these dreams, that's living within your own integrity. Now, a perfect example of this is uh, J.K. Rowling yeah. writing Harry Potter series. Right. You know, that didn't have the support. Actually, her partner left her at the time when she had said that this was what she wanted to full-heartedly do and she began writing on napkins on through now a series that is huge astronomically huge and you know she may not even have had the intention for it to be some huge giant thing but she just did it because she loved it and she was living within her own integrity yeah being true to herself yeah i love that the actual definition of integrity is the quality of being honest mm -hmm. and having strong moral principles mm -hmm. or moral uprightness, mm -hmm. right? So identifying in yourself, what are your moral principles? Mm -hmm. What is the code that you live by? You know, is the word important to you? Mm -hmm. Is what you say to people, how you act to people, how you live your life? What are those qualities within yourself that are important to you, that are aligned with your moral values? And it does take... A, you have to take a step back sometimes and even get a piece of paper out and write down what are my morals? What are my values? What do I stand for? Mm -hmm. You know, if I see somebody on the bus or on the train, you know, who's getting, you know, racially abused, for example, because their mm -hmm. skin color is different than somebody else, are you going to sit back and let them do that? Do you believe that's okay? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to stand up for them because you believe in? having higher values, right? Mm -hmm. So identifying with yourself, within yourself, being true to yourself. What are my morals and what do I stand for? And then walking in integrity mm -hmm. every day, right? Mm -hmm. So when you see things that are out of alignment with your morals or you do things that are out of alignment with your morals, which certainly happen from time to time, mm -hmm. how do you adjust in that moment and how do you adjust moving forward? so that you don't keep making the same mistakes. You don't keep trampling over your own values mm -hmm. because you know, that really determines who you are, who you show up in the world as you present yourself, mm -hmm. right? Is how you think, how you believe and how you act. And those are based on your values of yourself. And if your values are really low, then the experience of your life is gonna be really low. The higher your values are, the higher your mor morals are, the higher your standards are, mm. in certain senses, as long as you're not so strict on yourself that then you put yourself down mm -hmm. for not achieving those morals too, right? So there's a balance, but always continuously, and, and those will change over time. As you, as you change as a human being, your values should change over time and not become worse in any way, but become better, right? And that leads us into the fifth quality of greatness, which is love. And within love, there's a thousand things you could talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, qualities, what are qualities of love? Compassion and understanding, service, service to others, right? Being of service to people you know and people you don't know. Love for yourself, as we've talked about. Love for others, mm -hmm. love for the planet, love for your own passions, mm -hmm. right? Following your passion, following your bliss, being true to what is uh, right in your heart. Um, another big quality is forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. Huge quality of uh, a vibration of love is forgiving. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to what we were talking about with integrity is if you are out of alignment with your values, you can't beat yourself over the head with a hammer all day long. It's not going to get mm -hmm. you anywhere. You need to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I screwed up. I've screwed up many times in my life. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be where I am today had I not forgiven myself and forgiven people who had, you know, done things to me or treated me in a way that were also very, um, very negative and very traumatizing and things like that. Had I not forgiven them and forgiven myself, there's no way I would be in, in the positive place that I am today. So such an important part of that quality of love is forgiveness of self and forgiveness of others. So true. That's so potent. What's the 
what's the mantra that forgiveness mantra that we, we've talked we've talked in depth about do you remember that then when when you're when you're actually going through that visualization and that practice of forgiving someone there's that almost in a sense of formula like if if someone's really hanging on to something because of some sort of past trauma and and still taking it really personally from someone else and you've told you've told me this mantra and the formula um oh are you talking about ho'oponopono yeah the hawaiian tradition yes. yeah so um it's a very powerful practice and i still do it today I do too. um and uh, Ho'oponopono, it's, it's an, uh, basically an indigenous Hawaiian spiritual practice. And what it is, is, um, and you can practice this in any way with any person. Inside, you usually say it inside yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not usually saying it to somebody unless that somebody would be very receptive to it. Mm -hmm. um, but you say, um, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. I love you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you can say that a hundred times until you really feel it and really mean it. You know, if you do something uh, that you feel is out of alignment, say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you have to feel that thank you as if they've forgiven you. Mm -hmm. You know, and the love as if I'm giving, 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 giving. I love you. I'm sorry. Really feel sorry. You know, please forgive me. Now you're asking for something. Please forgive me. I love you. Now you're giving, mm -hmm. right, without attachment. And then the thank you is it's all done. Mm -hmm. It's all healed. It's all in the past now, right? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. It's ho'oponopono. And um, by no means am I a, a master of that spiritual practice, but I have been practicing it consistently for years. Mm -hmm. And it is very, very, very powerful. So beautiful and transformative too. Yeah. 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 And that's something that you can just start doing right away. If someone's going through some sort of trauma and you know the root of it. I mean, that's, that's the first, first thing is figure out the root of that because we all, we all want to enjoy life. We all want to have happiness and there's traumas that happen, you know, and it's not, it's not our fault. You know, it's not, don't, don't blame yourself. Do some practices that allow it to transform and when i also think of love love within life love with doing anything that you're doing is that when you do something because you love it that in and of itself is living within greatness when you're passionate and true to yourself and you're going full heartedly through being a father through being a leader through anything through meditating you're you're enjoying it you're living it you're loving it and then within that spectrum you're literally living within greatness absolutely and i think that's a good place to end it while we did go a little bit over in time we didn't go to ten thousand hours though that is about what it takes to master all of these things these things should be practices and creating habits and disciplines in our life every single day we hope you did get some positive things to take away from this some practical insights and if you enjoy this podcast uh, enjoy this episode please do us a favor Head over to iTunes and give it a five-star rating and leave us your review. We'd love to hear from you, and that helps the podcast to be seen by, by more people. Also, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone you care about. And we also have a free newsletter. We have inspiring videos and practical information we send out weekly at cranefactor.com. Again, that's cranefactor.com. We'd love to have you part of our newsletter. Um, until next time, we'll talk to you in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in and remember to activate greatness in every area of your life.